In this video, I'm going to modify a remote code execution exploit in Python and then use it against a live target in the safe environment of attack defense labs. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Chris, I'm a penetration tester and I make a lot of cybersecurity videos. Now, if that's something you're interested in, please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you're notified of all my new videos. Okay, now if you need penetration testing services, one-on-one -on -one penetration testing coaching, or if you want to consult with me on cybersecurity matters, you can get in touch using the links in the description. And if you want to learn how to code with Python, check out my Python basics course in which I teach you the fundamentals of Python that you will then use in cybersecurity and penetration testing. Link in the description for that as well. All right, uh, so in today's video, I'm doing another challenge on Attack Defense Labs, which is a platform to train your cybersecurity skills. Now, this uh, challenge is about exploiting Boson, and the specific version is 2.4 which is under the real world uh, web apps category. According to the instructions, we need to find a remote code execution vulnerability uh, and exploit it. So let's just uh, start the labs. Um, meanwhile, I can just go to Google and search for boson remote code execution. Okay, and as you can see over here, it shows uh, that I've already visited that page. So the first result was Boson 2.4 Remote Code Execution. Okay, so this is, we're actually going to the first result that pops up uh, on Google. Okay, so we have uh, the description or the security issue, the description of the vulnerability. Then we have the exploit or proof of concept and then we have more description down here. Okay, now let's actually go back. So our lab has already started. Okay, now if we look at the hint over here, we see some credentials, admin and password, P-A-S-S-W-D, uh, that we can use to explore but not exploit the app. So we can just quickly look at the app as I said over here and we see the generic boson uh, default installation. Let's actually start a Visual Studio code since we're gonna have to modify this uh, exploit or proof of concept. Okay so in Visual Studio code here let's uh, start a new file and then control save it on the desktop, let's save it at, as boson expl.py and then save it as a Python file. Python, okay. Control S, remove the welcome message. All right, now let's actually copy this uh, proof of concept over here directly into. Visual Studio Code. All right, now we're gonna have to do quite a few modifications over here before we actually have this running. So our web instance, we can just, uh, let's just pin this over here. And we can see this is the web address of uh, our instance on Attack Defense Labs, which runs the vulnerable application. And like I said, to have this running, so we can use the admin and password that we've been provided uh, by Attack Defense to actually explore but not exploit the application. So we are being presented with a new account screen and we can say admin PASSWD PASSWD and we're gonna log in with these credentials and to be honest there is not much to be exploring around but if you're really interested in wanting to know more about this type of application so uh, we're gonna connect now so this is the login screen uh, but it, like I said, if you're interested in knowing more about the application, you can just uh, check out and explore the, uh, this, uh, this user panel. So we have multiple options. We have uh, the ability to edit profiles. Uh, and like I said, if you're really interested, you could penetration test. You could just run this instance on your attack defense labs account 
and actually uh, try to find other vulnerabilities because uh, to be honest there might be other vulnerabilities in this uh, application um, if someone already has found something but then again that's not the purpose of uh, this video so going back to Visual Studio Code like I said we're gonna have to do quite a few modifications over here we're not gonna take the IP as raw input but we're actually uh, going to specify it as a command line argument so for that we're going to use the sys so uh, we're going to import url lib url url lib2 time and we're also going to import sys for command line arguments so we're going to modify the ip and i'm actually going to fire up this exploit from my windows machine uh, and we'll provide the the uh, web address uh, or the address of the web instance from Attack Defense Labs that runs the vulnerable app. We're going to provide it uh, uh, as a command line argument. Um, uh, we'll also modify the um, CMD. We're not going to use this exploit. We're going to delete it. We're going to modify the CMD, which is the actual exploit okay before we get into that in short what uh, this code does uh, or how it exploits the vulnerability is that it allows unauthenticated users to add new users to the application and also to inject commands through a PHP script which is um, auto restrict users it was somewhere over here or in the description I think it's over here yeah so auto restrict users .php, which contains the vulnerability so I can see this as a two-step exploit find uh, so first you would uh, add a new user and then inject and execute commands so getting back on track we'll also have to modify the URL we'll have to add a loop and I'm going to explain this shortly and we'll also have to modify uh, the response we get via the URL lib request. All right, so let's start with the IP. Uh, this is not going to be a raw input, as I said. This is going to be a sysrv1. OK. All right, we don't need this. OK, let's also, uh, let's also delete these. Like I said, we're only going to need the command, so this is the actual exploit, and we're also going to take this as a command line argument. So the exploit, by default, just prints or pastes uh, the PHP info. This is where we actually inject the command. So instead of having this PHP info, we're actually going to paste our sys argument so that we could run whatever command we want via the command line. So I'm just going to say system. We could use exact, shall exact, or other um, functions in PHP to execute system commands. But in this case, we're just going to use system. And I'm going to have quotes over here plus sys.argv2. This is going to be the second command line argument. And we're also, we're going to pipe this into output, and then we're going to close. So let's actually, we start the quotes. Hopefully I get it right. With so many quotes over here, it's like confusing. Uh, yeah, so closing this, uh, closing this PHP system execute command. Okay, now, um, what we then need to uh, we don't need this if so we're going to delete it like that if we look over here we have uh, the boson.master but in our case we don't actually have that uh, url path in our web instance we just have the index.php so we don't have any boson master we're just going to delete that so the URL is going to be the IP, which is going to be the command line argument, um, and then index.php. Okay, now the data. 
uh, this is where we create the user and inject uh, the command at the same time so uh, this is actually uh, we can actually leave this as as it is so it's going to create a new user uh, with ABC one two three creation one login CMD pass uh, so then uh, let's actually uh, print the message saying um, let's do print this is Python 2 so we'll say sending the requests dot 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 new line and this actually is where the creating uh, this is where creating the user and also executing the command happens at the same time then we have the request URL request URL dot data okay this remains unchanged so um, going back to the exploit um, according to this exploit let's see when an admin or user logs in um, or the web page gets reloaded the attackers commands are then executed as they are stored now in my understanding that means uh, we need to actually run the response or uh, load the request at least twice to get our current command to be executed now I'm actually saying this because I've done some trial and error to figure it out uh, and it might not be so easy to understand unless you debug it yourself so if you really want to understand why I'm gonna use a loop please debug this yourself and see how you're getting the requests and the responses how you're doing the requests and getting the responses and what actually prints to you as uh, the response dot read over here like I said uh, uh, for that I'm going to have to create a simple for loop to actually run the request a few times uh, and I'm going to have to add a uh, short delay after each one of them so after the request I'm just gonna say for I and range 0 3 the response it's actually is actually gonna be response URL lib URL open request and then we're gonna do a simple sleep over here time.sleep that's why we're using time that's why we've imported time time.sleep one for one second okay and then let's actually print uh, on a new line receiving the output dot 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 new line and then we're actually gonna get so let's make a little bit of space over here uh, then the response so we have to make sure we get the output uh, into the file that we specified in the CMD over here so uh, we're gonna look into the output for the response or in the output that we get from our request so we're we'll just gonna say response once again so it's twice the response equals to URL lib to URL open so URL lib to URL open and then we're gonna open our HTTP dot 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 we can just uh, copy this control C let's put it over there I could just say URL but it's not URL because instead of the index.php I have to specify the output output okay now according to the official um, exploit we're gonna have to sleep for 0.5 seconds let's say time dot sleep 0.5 and then finally print print the response dot read as it is over there I guess we don't need that anymore so let me make sure it looks right let's control s so it looks good on paper uh, but let's see how many errors we get and I'm gonna fire up a command prompt go to CD desktop okay and then I'm gonna run this with 
pi minus 2 because I have two versions of Python installed on my system. So it's boson expl.py, not the PDF. Okay. And then we'll have to specify the IP as a first command line argument. So we're going to get the IP from over here or the host, control C, control V, and we're going to paste it without the HTTP. All right, and then let's actually run the command. Let's say, who am I? Okay, first error, starting the debug process. It's not a dot over here, getting back. It's not a dot, control S, going back, running. So it says sending the requests. Let's see if it gets, uh, if it runs our command, who am I? So we're actually going to wait each time it runs into the loop, it's going to wait one second. That's why it takes like that long. And hopefully receive uh, our desired result. Okay, and we can see receiving the output dub 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 data. All right, let's run another one. Let's say cat and see password. All right, there you have it. We've read the Etsy password file. Okay, so that's how we actually adapted a remote code execution exploit to fit our very custom scenario. So uh, please make sure to only do this type of engagement in safe and legal environments and with the appropriate permission. Now question for you, what's one remote code execution exploit that you've encountered most in your work as a penetration tester? Comment down below. And before you go, I would really appreciate if you share this video with your cybersecurity fellas on social media so that we can grow this channel together. Also, please don't forget to look in the description for a discount on Python basics course for penetration testing services and for one-on-one -on -one coaching. And with that said, until next time, thank you for watching.